Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Cloud EC. I'm Sudhakar Raju. Uh, so today the session is on Docker View, and uh, we have taken the same session on uh, free webinar uh, conducted by us, uh, me and my friend Sundar, and we have taken the same topic. Since we could not record the session, I thought let me take this video as in, and I can upload it in YouTube so everyone can benefit out of it. So the today session is all about. Uh, uh, Docker overview. So we started with what is application insight and uh, what how the IT has been evolved to containerization and uh, what is virtualization and what is the difference between um, uh, virtual machines and the Docker and what is Docker is all about and and lab sessions. Uh, we just try to create a container and uh, we were able to do that uh, perfectly. Uh, so let me begin with. Uh, what is applications all about? Let me see. Ah, okay. So to begin with, what is applications? Uh, application is a piece of code or a bunch of code uh, written in uh, any programming languages, which is expected to give some output or some functionality, uh, which is expected in the programming language. What is written for? Uh, so any, if you take a, there are different types of applications. Um, for example, there is a uh, mobile applications or desktop applications, enterprise applications, and web applications. So if you take any applications which is actually built on top of any architectures, the architectures are uh, monolithic architecture, microservice architecture, and three-tier architecture. So let me park this three-tier architecture on the next slide, and I want to tell what is monolithic architecture and microservice architecture. So monolithic architecture is also called as a tightly coupled architecture, where you have uh, all the uh, applications have tightly coupled. You don't have any modular structure in it. So monolithic term means uh, composed of all in a single piece. So it is also described as a single tier application, uh, which has combinations of different layers. If the layers can be presentation layer, interactive layer, business logic, database layer, and notification layers. So before getting into this uh, slide, uh, let me explain you, uh, give you an uh, example. So I'll walk you through an example that will be easy for you to understand. Uh, and it can you can easily relate to this uh, monolithic application. So we all, uh, we all go to a restaurant and we order food and uh, we get a bill out of it. The particular bill which was generated uh, from the machine has some programming languages. That particular programming language could be written in C, 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 C++, or Java, or Python, or any other language. So when the when the code is ex expected as written and you get a bill uh, as what you feed and what you enter the menu detail and get that uh, out of it. Uh, so that's how the functionality works. Imagine if the particular code has 200 to 300 lines of code and if something goes wrong, and what you have to do is you have to fix the code. Otherwise, the functionality will not work. So that's why it's called tightly coupled. You mean to say you cannot uh, run the code successfully until the issue has been fixed. So it does not have a modular structure in place. Uh, so you just you can now you can just come to this slide so you can easily relate to what I said here. So here, if I have I have taken an example as a uh, retail customer, so we actually experienced with um, Flipkart and Amazon. We ordered we ordered a lot of products through that. So definitely, uh, this these companies would have started their architecture by using monolithic architectures, meaning comprising or composing all the uh, services all together in a single instance. So if you have see, uh, if you just see the notice, if you just see the uh, services in the monolithic architecture, all these customer service, product service, and card service are actually packaged in single instance. Meaning, if you have any uh, upgrade to be done on particular service. If you want to patch anything on the other service, you have to bring down this application and you need a downtime to upgrade this particular uh, architecture altogether. You want to say the applications altogether. And if you just see on the right hand side, it's microservice architecture, which is completely different from the monolithic and microservices. If you just see the uh, services, which is completely isolated and running in an independent or it is in an isolated environment. Uh, if you just compare the two uh, architectures, the microservices are running separately, 
and if you need to upgrade or you need to do some patching or you need to do some changes on each individual microservices which is really possible and you can do uh, using this uh, containerization uh, technologies so I just, let me also give you an example like you know we might have experienced uh, three years or two years before or even even some years before when we try to use net banking you know uh, we might have experienced some over the when we try to uh, send money to our friends what happened or over the weekend you might have seen that it could be uh, we could get an error saying that this uh, that's a particular site is um, uh, out of order or could be, it is under construction or uh, you need to wait uh, wait for some more time to get the service up right so but if you just see the same application now when you try to send money over the weekend you might not experience the issue meaning all these applications was in the monolith architecture it is being migrated to microservice architecture uh, so on the uh, high level if you just want to give a comparison between monolithic architecture and microservice architecture monolithic architectures are tightly coupled and uh, it is difficult to scale uh, easy to develop but difficult to scale the environment but when you talk about microservice architecture it is loosely coupled it is easy to scale and easy to develop and it is also um, in terms of uh, deployment, it comes very easy using CI/CD process. This is the high-level difference between monolithic and microservice applications. Uh, so, also, I want to give you the IT evolution uh, and the transformation, which is actually we are talking about right now, because most of the companies are talking about DevOps. Everyone talking about safe microservices, containers, and containers and cloud. So how this this trend and how this IT has been evolved and how the transformation happened from the beginning to till now and how the transformations occurred. So I want to just uh, I took this uh, picture and uh, this is this is completely not realistic because uh, this particular uh, picture which was done on my understanding. So you cannot just relate everything is right as per the industry standard, uh, which is actually a few companies are still using all this. Uh, a traditional way of approach so you cannot just say all these companies or all the organization are moved towards uh, the the current trend which is in the bottom so it's not actually the realistic so, but for understanding we are uh, doing this and moreover but I ask we have to agree that every companies are moving towards the bottom approach which is actually the current trend what we see uh, when you see the working model in the early stage, like uh, I hope there could not be any team in individual. Like they would have started with some team called it, the help desk or individuals. When they get some request, they would have done the uh, uh, services based on the request. It can be any any programming or any anything which which product owners requested for. And uh, when we talk about uh, the development process, uh, the waterfall was the first uh, software development life cycle which was actually followed it was a sequential order um, considering the, uh, the top to bottom approach uh, so when you want to uh, in respect to collect gathering information or the implementation or planning whatever but the, it is predefined well and uh, if you want to implement you, you want to you want to wait from the uh, beginning uh, and you have to plan it well in advance and you have to implement in the, uh, the end of process the problem with waterfall was uh, uh, you cannot actually uh, do any iteration in between. For example, if the product wants some changes in programming or you want to update something, which is actually not possible in waterfall. Okay, so that was uh, a bigger drawback in waterfall process. And the following waterfall, there was a lot of models, like iterative big bang model was followed, but that was not adopted by IT industries. Okay, so it was eventually ruled out. And when you talk about monolithic architecture, as I said, a monolithic architecture is a, a tightly coupled architecture with it was difficult to scale your environment and it was uh, challenges in deploying your, uh, the, the challenges, I mean, enhancing or scaling your environment, right? So when we talk about uh, physical server, physical servers is nothing but it's also called uh, big bank servers. Uh, uh, when you say, Big Bang, it's, the server is called um, Big Fat Service, I'm sorry, Big Fat Service. Big Fat Service means like you have a big service in, uh, in, in your racks and you have to deploy your applications in that particular physical server. For example, uh, you might have purchased a physical server for one TV of uh, hard disk and uh, 
uh, 128 GB of RAM and uh, some some size of CPU, which is so big, and you run just uh, 10 gig of applications, which is actually uh, there's no point running all these applications on the physical server. And there was a standard uh, each in the, each application would be taking each physical server. And uh, in this uh, with this respect, uh, industries and the companies started seeing a lot of uh, loss using these physical servers. Okay. And they all deployed in the data centers. Yeah, of course, as I said like earlier, uh, we cannot just say that uh, data centers are used used now. It's not so realistic. But I, just for example, I just took this picture how, how the IT has been evolved from data centers to cloud. That's what I want to say. But still, a few industries or many industries are using data centers. And here passing, um, I say here the working model uh, changed from the uh, from the previous to a development and operation model where you see development team and operation teams were formed and development teams take care of the development and operation teams takes care of uh, operation team by implementing and maintaining the stability. Uh, when you talk about uh, Agile, Agile is the another, uh, next uh, software development lifecycle process which was actually mostly adopted by IT industries um, where you have the Scrum Ban and Scrum as Agile framework where you have repetitive meeting and repetitive sprint process and uh, this was actually uh, formed which, which was so which was so achievable in terms of delivering and getting the products on time uh, when you talk about a uh, three-day architecture in the application architecture uh, this was the next level of architecture design which uh, they which they uh, tried to implement all the application but over the time, even they found a lot of challenges in terms of complexity and in terms of deployment and maintaining the applications. And uh, coming to development package, you see a VM here, which is actually a, a tremendous uh, IT transformation. The whole IT has been seen because uh, they were de deploying all these applications in physical servers where they found a lot of challenges in terms of cost, in terms of manageability, in terms of uh, um, um, maintenance and everything but when they see when they see in the VMs uh, taking over the, over the rules so complete IT industry so it was so beneficial and they started deploying all the applications using virtual machines okay and you can see there's an infrastructure called rental uh, meaning uh, you can actually host all your application in the rental um, format because um, if you cannot offer you cannot uh, offer, uh, if you cannot uh, offer you to build a data center of course you can have you can rent any uh, already available data centers just paying you what service you use for uh, companies like salesforce are the companies who actually rent which can be rent taken you can actually pay for the uh, hardware what you're using or you can actually uh, deploy your hardware there and you can just pay only for the rental uh, what is used for but it again it depends on the agreement you can actually uh, go and check if, if the particular functionality is available or not. Uh, right now, now uh, I, I would like to more focus on the, uh, the, the the top, the bottom approach, which is actually uh, IT industries get more focused on because it's, it is a trend now. Wherever you just see, of uh, course, people talking about DevOps, uh, they're talking about safe microservices, contents, and cloud, everything. So what is DevOps? So DevOps is a practice. It's a um, it's a way of working. You want to work. You want to make your development and operation works together so to make the business uh, agile and get the product on time. Okay. So the the deployment times is also getting uh, uh, increased by using the, by using this practice. So you don't see any delay in the um, delivery uh, in this and breaking the silo between the teams and uh, understanding the, the working model everything becomes so easy by this particular model. So next uh, next development process is called SAFE. It's called Scalable Agile Framework, uh, which is now uh, they are trying to adopt this uh, Agile methodology. It's also follows the same value and principle what Agile follows, but it is more, or more, more, or more on the um, organization level, which is not just to concentrating on the, not like an agile is concentrating only on the team level. It's a kind of improvement which um, organization is looking for to make sure the uh, stability, uh, how the agile is doing and some lacking, some lack, lacking of functionality which can be solved using this state. So 
so as I said, uh, microservices are the um, uh, loosely coupled architecture where you can deploy all your services in isolated environment using container. Um, so that that is very much possible uh, using containers, and this containers will be discussed in your uh, in the coming slides. So you will understand what is containers all about. So coming to cloud, yeah, as I said, cloud is not something invisible. It is also a data center which is owned by different cloud providers like AWS, GCP. Azure, Microsoft, um, UI, um, there are plenty of cloud providers where you actually uh, you can just pay as you go. You can it works as a pay as you model. You can just pay and use it, and uh, so you I can host. You can host all your application. You can follow all this uh, technology in cloud, and you can deploy your own uh, setup in your environment. So hope you all understood the, how the what is uh, what is application, uh, what is monolithic and microservices and uh, what is how the IT has been evolved from the uh, from then to now okay let's get on to the next one uh, what is docker and why is docker before getting to know what is docker let me tell you uh, why the docker is actually required okay let me just check if my recording is going on so because I'm just keep talking yeah it's going on Okay, so before getting to know what is Docker, let me tell you what why is Docker. Uh, so let me explain you this scenario using an example. So you, you will be easily uh, understanding what is the concept is all about. So if you just see there are two persons actually sitting, one person is in the developer side, another person is in the testing side. So before uh, Docker comes into existence and uh, the developer is trying to test the code, for example, he's trying to he or she is trying to develop a code in Java and using Tomcat, and uh, he wants to build an application out of it. And uh, she is actually building it, and she extracts the output uh, as a .dot .war file. It's kind of an .exe file. What we see, you're just executing the .war file, and she's just giving the .war file to the testing team. So the testing team is actually testing the .war file. What was the developer did, and uh, found that particular code is not working on their system. And you can ask me why this code is not working uh, on testing system. Is it was working fine in developer system? The only issue is like uh, the could be the environment change. Uh, environment means the configuration which they are using in development environment and testing environment. So, so how this issue can be solved? Okay. So when you just have a question in mind, uh, the team comes into picture and they ask how can this issue can be solved? So one person is saying. Which you, this issue can be solved by creating two virtual machines on the two environments with same configuration. Okay, if you can create two virtual machines or complete environment of virtual machines, then it's a hectic task because you want there could be already running, uh, there could be a chance of running all the VM machines in a different environment. And if you try to uh, um, upgrade your environment with new functionalities or new libraries or binaries. It could cause impact with the existing applications, right? So that's the reason they are saying, why can't we go with Docker? Okay, what Docker does? Yeah, that's what we are going to see in this uh, in this video. So before Docker, so now what happened? So developer uh, uh, created some application in in his, in his environment or in her environment and shipped the same to the tester, but testing environment doesn't work. Okay, so what is the issue? What is the solution for that? Now, developer team and testing team came together and they discussed and they decided to go with Docker. Okay, what does Docker do? So Docker has to be installed on their both environment. Okay, and they have to develop the testing. They have to develop the code on the top of Docker. Okay, imagine now all this developer environment is having a Linux environment. And testing environment is also Linux, and they built the top of that. They built it in a Docker uh, environment. If you just take an example, in, in developer environment, 99% uh, of developers will be using Windows laptop. Only a few percent will be using Linux laptop. If you just take a testing environment or production environment, when you want to host application, most of the applications are hosted on the Linux platform. Nothing will be running on the Windows platform, right? So there's a conflict in that. So to avoid the conflict, what happens? Developer wants to sit with the testing team or the production team, 
and uh, they want to build the application like what the production team has for example now uh, the developer wants to install some java based application on tomcat so what i can do what what she want to do she want to understand okay what is the production environment running okay the production environment is running on red hat okay let's take a red hat here and what is what is java version okay what is the java version of production okay let's take java version of that particular version and what is the version of tomcat okay let's take the version of tomcat okay now the developer has to write a file called docker file okay what is docker file docker file is a set of instruction which allows which makes you to create an image out of the instructions so that instruction i'll tell you how to write a docker file in the next uh, session because this is just an overview and the docker file docker compose and other things are bigger topic which which you cannot understand right away so so what uh, what docker file what the developer has to do she has to write a docker file with set of instructions which actually creates an image out of it so what she does she got all the requirement from the testing team she has collected the necessary information how the uh, application has to build as per the production environment she writes a docker image okay docker file on docker file is used to create an image out of it so after an image is been created she wants to run the image as a container so once the image is run as a container the container is available readily available as a application readiness so that application can be accessed as per the requirement for example if she wants to build an application that application is readily available i hope it will be very difficult for you to understand why i'm talking about image and uh, i'm talking about that for container and everything slowly you will understand what is all about okay now what happens so both the environment as i said they are actually running with docker environment and the developer started using the code tested the code in developer environment under the under the docker uh, docker uh, framework or docker engine so now the image has been created now the image can be shipped to testing environment okay it has been built now it is shipped to testing environment once the docker has been shipped shipped means nothing is there they are transferring the file that's it and just it's a high term terminology what docker is using so shipping the file to the testing environment and the docker is built on the testing environment also now testing team what they do they get the uh, uh, image file and they just run the containers so the containers once the container is run uh, it's running the applications are easily available on the uh, particular port or how the design of applications and all of that on the port so now uh, you just see the complete uh, environment is uh, ready by using the docker environment right so it's cool now right? cool right so now docker has solved a big uh, issue uh, even though you have all this uh, uh, you know the instability or the uh, what you call the the compatibility issue in the environment which is easily solved by this docker uh, if you still you cannot understand what is docker uh, probably the pre next coming slides will explain you in detail uh, which will give you more insight about it okay before getting to know what is docker and um, uh, what is virtual machines i would like to tell you what is virtualization is all about so virtualization is a uh, is a process of uh, making your physical environment to a virtual environment okay using some special software uh, this physical machines can be your laptop or your desktop or it can be any bare metal in the data centers so the all physical machine has its own cpu ram hard disk and networking so if you use a virtual machine if you start using virtual machine of course it shares the the resources of hardware which you have been deployed of right so here the special software is called hypervisor which is actually converts your physical machine into virtual environment okay so what is the difference between virtual machine and the docker you can just see that virtual machine has a guest os but docker does not have guest os here why it is like that because 
Docker is actually a Linux based solution. Okay, and the container what you create is also a Linux based container. So the host OS which is built on the infrastructure in Docker side is actually a Linux distribution. For example, host OS is a if just imagine host OS is a Ubuntu. And the container what you have created here, application one and the binaries and the libraries, which is actually a Linux container, could be on Fedora. Right? So the Linux distribution also all share the same kernel, right? So that's the reason the Docker container is lightweight in nature. You don't need to worry about the uh, kernel or you don't want to build the guest OS as like virtual machines here. Here, this, the problem is solved because the kernel uh, is not actually loaded in the containers. So it is actually sharing the containers of the host kernel itself. That's what is called lightweight containers. What is other, what is the other difference here? Uh, the other difference of the called Docker container and virtual machine is like the booting time is very less because when you try to boot a virtual machine, it's kind of booting your normal um, laptop or normal uh, desktop, right? So it has its own OS, binary libraries and application. It takes its own time. For example, it takes a couple of months. But when you want to boot a Docker, Docker will boot in less than two seconds. Okay, even. Even if it can just take it as a second, it'll it'll come it'll come online. So, uh, what is the other difference? If you just take the infrastructure of the underlying hardware, uh, the CPU, RAM, or hardware, or fixed in virtual machines, meaning if the hardware for the hardware which is built on uh, built for virtual machine, if, imagine it has one TB of uh, 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 hard disk and 56 of RAM and uh, some CPU is less efficient. And if you just share across the three virtual machines here, uh, it is already fixed. So when you want to increase that, uh, the size of virtual machine, you cannot do it dynamically. So you have to do it manually, right? But in, in case of Docker container, it is very much possible. It can be done dynamically. The term dynamically means it is done through online. For example, when you want to uh, when the container size is uh, reserved for 250 GB and it needs some more uh, GB of size, it actually takes from the uh, underlying hard disk. So you don't need to worry about the uh, allocation doing it manually. It takes care of dynamic allocations. Okay, this is one of the major uh, difference between virtual machines and Docker. And coming to scalability, uh, Docker is so scalable because it's lightweight in nature and it can you can spin multiple. Uh, containers in the same hardware, but in case of virtual machine, it's not possible. Okay, so it is scalable, but still it, it has a lot of constraints in nature. And portability, portability as I said, uh, containers are developed to build, ship, and run anywhere, anytime, as many time you want. Okay, that's the difference between virtual machine and Docker. And simple term simple term if i want to say what is docker docker is actually a tiny microcomputer even though it looks like virtual machine it is super fast and uh, and it can run in isolated environment and applications are so accessible and super fast in deployment okay this is the major difference between vm and docker okay right now in the previous image we saw what is uh, why docker uh, and we saw the difference between Docker and virtual machine. Now we need to see what is Docker. Okay. Docker, as I said, it is a software virtualization tool which actually uh, creates applications in a lightweight container. Uh, it can create multiple containers in the same hardware with isolated environment. It is also high productivity and quick and easy configuration, which has already been discussed in previous slides. Okay. Let me tell you uh, what is Docker. Just giving an example. Okay, so you you own a house. Okay, and you have three rooms, bedrooms, and you have one common kitchen and common cupboard. Okay, and uh, you're requesting the um, the guest to share the particular common cupboards and kitchen. Right, uh, but uh, users are a little hesitant, and their preference is completely different. Okay, they want to know, they want to use their own cupboard and own kitchen rather 
sharing the resource. The same way, uh, Docker is also the Docker is the same same concept. Okay, um, so they have the containers and they can run their own applications, own frameworks. Okay, they don't want to share the resources because it's lightweight in nature and it is capable of doing it. Okay, and uh, so if you just see, there is four uh, containers and each application has a, they can fit with their their own frameworks in nature. But uh, how can this be solved? This can be solved like how you fix for the guest. What you do it for? What what you do if you rent the house for the guest to get the rent? What you do? You just don't spend don't mind spending so much money. So rather you just uh, uh, allocate some own resources for them, right? So you you allocate cupboard and kitchen in each room and make them happy. So they are not uh, they can run it in their own rooms and they can they'll be happy and they don't depend on other thing. Right. The same way, uh, the solution for Docker also applies. So Docker enables the containers can run their own applications in their own uh, containers. So it is capable of running their own framework. It is capable of running their own applications. It is capable of running their own libraries and binaries. So it does not depend on any other hardware, basically. So if you want to upgrade something, it is easily possible that just bring down this particular layer down and though this this container will be connected to any volume uh, through NAS filer or any mount volumes so you no need to worry about data data will be backed up and you just want to change the framework or you want to change any application or dependencies you can do it and bring back the new containers and attach the uh, volume to that the container is ready for applications so docker does everything for you no need to worry about anything about at all you know it is easy to deploy and you can start using it okay coming to uh, the docker architecture so what is uh, docker architecture how the architecture is being designed architecture is is a simple uh, way in uh, docker is maintained which is called client and server architecture what is client and server meaning client is just uh, uh, it's called a docker cli or any any uh, third-party client which actually communicate with the daemon server. What is daemon server here? Daemon server or service which is actually hosted on the host operating system which actually serves the request back to the Docker client. So if I want to give an example, Docker CLI want to create any resource or create a container. What it does, you just run a Docker run command and if the Docker run command actually exposed to the REST API. So REST API carry your request and comes to Docker daemon server and Docker daemon server will evaluate your request and gives the response back to the REST API saying that okay you saw you asked to create a container yes if it's possible yeah go ahead and do the container creation. So the, the REST API goes back to the client and gives the response and the container gets created in the back end. So this is the this is a high level design of uh, architecture and this is very easy to understand. Okay, so this is how the Docker works in high level. Okay, so coming to components of Docker. What are the components that are available in Docker? So we might have we have already seen what is Docker client and server. It is a part of architecture. Client is uh, the it can which is a Docker CLI where you use you, you give a command to get output out of it. And server is nothing but a daemon server where it evaluates and for response to request back to the Docker client. What is Docker image? So as I said, I think I have covered it in a previous slide. What is Docker image? Docker images are written in a Docker file. It is a set of instructions which creates in a layers. Okay, so you will not understand everything now because as I said before, uh, this will be understood once when we start using uh, containers when we start using the deployment so no need to worry about it don't get tensed or don't get worry what is docker image and other stuff just keep things in mind and next session i will explain you very clearly so docker images are a set of instructions which is created in a layer format and it is available to create a containers okay so once the image is ready so images are ready to create a containers using images Containers can be created. 
now we can ask what is different between images and containers uh, to be honest both have the same information okay when you when you talk about container when you see containers containers also have the same information what docker images holds so docker images are static or you can call it as sleeping function sleeping nature but docker containers are in the runtime it is in the running nature okay this is the difference between docker images and docker containers what is docker registry so docker registry is directly linked with a docker hub so we have uh, we know what is github bitbucket right so we have all our codes there similar way docker is also having their own uh, hub where the images are loaded it has been certified by docker and it has been authorized by docker so you can go and use the you can pull that pull the code and you can start deploying your environment so they they also offers a, they also offer a, a different repository it's an individual repository for us where you can create our own repository where we can we can pull or we can push our uh, the images what we create in our own and you can start using that as well so this is all the components of docker so if you have any question you can just drop me an email or you can call me to get to know in more detail okay docker swarm so what is docker swarm what is orchestration so you might have seen orchestration is nothing but uh, if you just seen any um, musical uh, forum or any musical uh, dramas you know you might have seen one person might have taken some sticks and you might have orchestrated the complete uh, musical uh, players right so it's kind of instructing them to how to do it the same way docker swarm is an orchestration tool it instructs the the nodes and the containers what to do okay so docker swarm is a is a group of clusters where it where it combines managers and workers together okay so when you talk about orchestration it actually means the managers assign the task to the workers okay so in, in our office we have managers right so we our, the managers will assign the work to us and we do and we deliver the same same way the docker swarms also does it so the docker manager will get the rest, get the task and assign the task to the workers and workers get the worker work done and deliver the product or deliver the request what the managers ask for uh, so again as i said this is again a different a big topic which we'll actually discuss in a different forum uh, but i'll give you on the high level what is docker swarm is all about when you want to build a docker swarm and environment you need to initialize this docker swarm in any of the nodes for example here we have four nodes in a in our environment and one node is been reserved for managers it is not reservation when you want to take this particular node as a manager you just need to run a command called docker swarm and it, it actually makes the particular node as a manager node and if you want to uh, join the workers to the particular manager node there is another command called docker uh, swarm join uh, as worker with the token number the token number if you issue on the particular manager it actually the nodes are getting joined to the particular swarm cluster this how the clusters are getting available so what is a docker swarm because uh, if you can't understand let me explain in different way and uh, if you want to deploy some services if you want to deploy some applications earlier we saw that we we do, do run only on the particular workers and if you take in some organization level right you cannot go and work on the individual nodes you have uh, 4000 containers 10000 containers available and every application will be running in different containers it's very easy to it's very difficult to manage right but it makes life easy to um, easy manage everything is possible in docker swarm okay uh, so here there are different services available so what are the services so the services called docker services docker stack and docker constraint what is docker service if you deal with one application and if you want to deploy one application across these three nodes i'm just taking an example but okay you can just take imagine it if you want to deploy one application across the three nodes okay if you want to deploy nginx as a web server and you want to get that ready and you run the code we run the command the docker spam manager what happened that particular command will actually deploy this nginx 
in all these three nodes and you can actually increase the nodes you can increase your replicas and you can increase the uh, you can scale the applicator containers based on the requirement and what is stack stack is nothing but you can deploy multiple uh, multiple applications earlier docker service was able to do only one application but if you want to do multiple applications in different nodes this docker stack will help you in doing it okay so docker stack will help you when you run the docker stack deploy command on the uh, docker manager it actually deploys all the containers in the worker nodes what is docker constraint so constraint is nothing but you actually label your worker nodes based on their environment okay so in our organization we will be having development uat protection right you cannot just uh, go and run each application or if you want to do some changes in any environment you cannot just uh, uh, go and run it in the different individual machines so what do you do you group that in particular constraints by labeling it just label it as a development label it as networking so label that uat and label it as production when you run the command using the label the particular application gets deployed only in the particular uh, constraints okay so this is how the docker spam works and uh, there's an, uh, this you might have heard about kubernetes kubernetes is a uh, other open source uh, tool which is another orchestration tool uh, which has been widely used by organizations which actually takes care of container orchestrations uh, so that uh, we will actually plan for differentiation only for uh, orchestration what is different between docker spam and kubernetes with labs so you guys will understand even more better okay so so just want to give you on the high level what is the key takeaway of today's session uh, we have seen uh, what is applications and what are the application we have applications like uh, uh, desktop application mobile application web application and enterprise application so web applications could be uh, you know, like simple websites or some some blogs that could be the web application if you talk about enterprise application um, you can just see uh, any net banking or uh, this retail business like amazon flipkart is having a, a connecting to this e-commerce so e money uh, those are the enterprise application when you talk about desktop application any application which is having desktop for example when you have a desktop or laptop uh, ms office or communicator those are the applications and mobile application of course instagram facebook whatever application you know that that's called the application and we saw how the architecture has been built what are the architectures architectures are monolithic three uh, tier and microservices monolithic are uh, tightly coupled microservices are loosely coupled and more three tier architectures are having three three layers application layer presentation layer and database layer, database layer. and we saw uh, we saw this what uh, white docker is all about uh, i just give an example how the developer uh, wants to implement their application uh, on the testing environment and the production environment and how the discussion went why docker is in the picture why why can't a virtual machine can solve this issue so that was discussed because a uh, virtual machine has this compatibility issue which cannot be uh, done in larger environment but docker solves that because it has its own libraries and dependencies which can be easily solved solve the issues and that was discussed and why docker we have discussed and what is docker i just give an example of how uh, house example where you have multiple application which can host its own um, framework for own uh, libraries uh, applications on it it can be easily deployed and can be scaled and it can be shipped to any environment right that's what we saw in docker and we saw the components of docker we saw the architecture of docker architecture is client server architecture and it is also comp- part of component and we saw what is docker image and docker image is set up in section in state layers which can be built as a container later and containers are image the same uh, this is containers are uh, running mode and images are in sleeping mode um, which is static and we also saw the uh, docker registry which is actually a docker hub where you have your images loaded which is approved and uh, verified by docker where you can pull and push and, uh, and commit to the commit as containers so this is about the docker architecture 
and what is RPA Sync to me. We saw Docker Swarm and just the previous slide where it is used to deploy um, uh, in a cluster format using service stack and and uh, constraint mode. So these are all about uh, uh, the high level. This is a quiz which we planned for, but unfortunately we could not make it. But uh, coming uh, coming uh, days, we can see how we can do it even better. So this gives you the high level of Docker. So hope you all understood. Um, please question, raise a question, concerns to me. It will be easy for me to understand, um, and I will definitely really help you uh, to you know uh, to help you more even understanding of that. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, please subscribe my channel if you have not done it, and uh, uh, please email me if you have any questions. Thank you so much, and take care. Bye bye.